Hello there and welcome to part three of this video series. In this episode, we'll be spawning in some enemies um, uh, using a timer and a timeout signal and connecting that up to the spawn function that can make these enemies spawn off the screen. And the enemies are just prefabs that move to the left and will eventually uh, be able to kill the player as they play. So believe it or not, you pretty much already know everything you need to know in order to be able to spawn in some enemies and make it endless. Um, I'll get you started and what I'd like you to do is, if you want to, you can just pause the video and you can try and see if you can implement the spawning of enemies and the movement of those enemies using what you already know from the previous two videos. So to get started, it's probably best that we go over some of the things that we're going to need to do. Now, one of the key things is that the enemies we want um, to spawn in by the game. Uh, we don't want the player to spawn them in and we've only got two things on our scene right now. So the best thing to do is to um, make a script on the game um, and then also we need to create the prefab that we want for our laser. With those two things in mind, if you want to, you can pause the video and you can try and do exactly the, that. Um, if not, you can just keep playing and I'll show you uh, how to do that and I'll go through the entire process. All right, so I think the first thing I'd like to do is to create the enemy prefab. So I have my prefabs folder and I'm going to create myself a new enemy scene. Just like before, this new enemy scene is going to be in Area 2D so we can use the signals to detect the collisions. We'll get around to those in some future videos. And this is going to be called Enemy. Obviously, that's a good name for an enemy. And we are already know that we're probably going to add in the Sprite 2D node. i um, going to look um, for that Sprite 2D node. The texture for this, I'm just going to do the load so that I can dig into this PNG folder and find an enemy. So um, there is an enemies um, folder in here and uh, you can choose anyone you like. I think I quite like this red one over here so I'm going to open that up and just like the last time um, it's transform we need to change so I'm going to make this uh, rotated by minus 90 so that it points in the other direction which looks kind of weird and also um, make this scale of 0 0.5 so it matches all the other ones. And the last thing is obviously just like before we need its collision shape so collision shape 2d click on the rectangle shape and then i'll just zoom in a little bit and just drag these up and out so that we've got something that matches approximately the size and shape of the enemy so i'm going to save that uh control s right there into prefabs as enemy.tscn um and we'll also need um, the script on this that will, to begin with, will just make the enemy move. So um, on this enemy, click on the plus over here. The script's gonna be called enemy, but I don't want it in the prefabs folder. I'm gonna go up a level into my scripts folder and chuck it in there and then click create. Now, like before, we're gonna keep it really simple. Um, and every frame in the process function, we're gonna change the position um, the X position actually, and we say minus equals, and I'm going to move it pretty slowly. So I know my player moves about 10, so I'm going to make it move at half the speed. Um, I've just control S to save that again. I'm going to go into my game and I'm going to test this enemy. So in 2D, I'm going to drag one of my new enemy scenes um, straight into here, and I'm going to hit play, and it should move. It's actually moving pretty fast, so I think I will change that down. Um, you're welcome to do that, to change it down if you wish. So back into enemy and just look at the enemy script. I think I'm going to make that like real slow. I'll maybe make it um, two. Uh, it's even slower. Um, like before, I might um, make an at export var and uh, speed up here. And I'll make that a value of two. And then I'll just replace that. So like before, that gives us on the enemy it gives us this um, editable property up here that we can change without having to go into our code so just real quick checking again that the enemy goes a little bit slower so it does and I'm pretty happy with that speed so now for the fun part we're uh, going to go back to the game here I'm going to add a script onto the game here the uh, again change the location so that we put it all in the same place so all our scripts go in scripts and it's going to be called game.gd. Um, this script is going to be, um, I'm going to put a comment here, it's going to be in charge of uh, uh, keeping the score, among other things. 
uh, later on we'll be doing that um, and uh, spawning the enemies um, just I put this in here just so it keeps me right and you should always uh, put in some code comments as well as you're writing your own code just so that you know um, what your intention is so that you can make sure you meet them so the spawning in of enemies in order for that to happen um, we're going to need a reference to that enemy and as before we have done this so we um, we say at on ready and then we say var and then I'm gonna say um, like I did the last time I'm gonna say enemy underscore prefab that's kind of my basic convention and then I'm gonna preload the enemy scene if I can spell it correctly the enemy scene um, that we had just made a few minutes ago that will allow us to pop those in whenever we want now the question is when do we want to um, spawn them in so one of the easiest ways is to just have a timer and that timer will just when it times out um, it will spawn in an enemy so it's pretty easy to spawn in an enemy we could do it from any reason but I think we'll just go straight to the timer so the game um, as a child of the game I want to add in that timer so I'll search for the timer node and then just create that and I'm just gonna um, rename it quickly to um, enemy timer so that I can kind of remember because there may be other timers later on in my game so this enemy timer is going to be set to auto start over on the right and we're going to say one second just while we test it so because we can adjust this as much as we like to time out whenever we want now I believe this is the first time we've really looked at signals inside of um, this tutorial so a uh, little explanation is probably required so a timer has a timeout signal. This timeout signal can be connected to anything that you like. Now we've got the game and the enemy timer on the same scene at all times so it's pretty safe to connect this up to the game script. So if I click this timeout and then click connect or you can double click on, on the signal that you want and then it allows you to choose any object that has a script on it. Um, I'm going to choose this game and I'm just going to look down here to see what it's going to call the function. So this this underscore on enemy timer timeout, it's a pretty good name for it. I don't need to change that. And because I haven't written a function yet, I don't need to pick an existing function that I may have already written. Um, if I leave it at that and click connect, what it does is it pops in this function and it puts this special little green connected icon to the left of it. This shows that this has got a connection from somewhere um, that will make this function run. If this green thing's gone missing, then you know that it's probably um, not connected. And that's a good thing to check for when you're trying to debug. So just to check that it works, I'm just going to print, um, print something like timeout and then just save that. And then we'll run our code and make sure that it works. So I'm running it. Um, running the game and you can see this timeout, 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 timeout is appearing every single second so we know that the timeout's actually working and obviously this is not what we want, we want it to actually spawn the enemy. So we can replace the print timeout with the thing that we want. So we've done this before so I'm just going to save our enemy, create a placeholder variable for my enemy and I'm going to say um, enemy prefab dot instantiate and just instantiate that enemy exactly like we have. Um, the next question is uh, we need to position it um, and this is where we get to use random which is really cool. So the uh, we want to set the X position at a very specific location just off to the right of the screen and we want the Y position to be a random value. Um, for now, um, just so we can see that this works, we're going to say uh, that we want the enemy enemy uh, dot position to be um, equal to, and I'm just going to just define a value, I'm going to say vector2, and I think the screen's 1100 big, so I'm just going to say 1100, and then for the y value I'm just going to say, I think it's about 600 high, so I'm just going to say 300. Um, I could go check those values, but I'm lazy, so I won't. Obviously we need to remember to add this in as a child. And what we're going to be doing is, because this script is on the game, it's quite safe to add this in just as a child of the game. And it'll just appear as another object as a child of the main game, which is 
which is perfect. So we can just use the simple add child and then choose um, enemy and that will just add that in as an enemy. So we'll just quickly test it. So running the main scene, what we're looking for is that we get one enemy every second. So that's absolutely perfect. What I am going to do in my um, main scene is just get rid of this um, this test enemy in here. So we'll just rely on the game to spawn them in. So that's pretty good. Um, we've got them spawning in and we've got them spawning in every second, but we need to have some random Y value. And I think the X value is not quite right. So if I look in the 2D view, I'm just going to use my player. If I go back to the inspector here and click on my player, I'm just going to use my player as a little test bed, um, kind of. So I'm looking at the transform values for this player and I'm just going to drag them across. So we can see that um, I probably want to spawn about here, just off the blue. So that's 1200, um, which is right on the X. And the, the sort of lowest value I'd like is probably 30. And the highest value is probably, I don't know, like 600, something like that, maybe um, 610. So 30 and 610 and 1200 for the X. So we need to use, uh, remember those values so that we can use them in our random calculations. So uh, to get a random value, um, I'm just going to say um, random Y. Um, create a quick variable to hold this. So say val variable random y equals, and you've got this awesome function called, um, let's see if I can spell correctly. So uh, rand i range. This rand i range allows me to choose a minimum value and a maximum value, and it'll just return a value um, between those randomly um, every single time. So it, that'll give it random value for the Y. So I think I chose uh, 30 and 610 was my two values for that. And the X value should have been 1200. So when we set the position of this enemy before we add it as a child, we're gonna set it to an X value of 1200, which I measured was just off the screen. And then this new random Y variable that we've just created. Uh, hopefully, if we just test this now, we should get the enemy spawning just off the screen and appearing at a random uh, Y value every single time. So hopefully that was uh, a rather pain-free experience for you. Um, the entire script just looks a little bit like that. We've got the um, spawning in by the main game. The game has a script on it that has a timer connected to it and the timeout for that is set to one second and when it we've connected that timeout to this um, function on enemy timer timeout that spawns in an enemy just by instantiating that enemy so hopefully it was as I said not too painful and hopefully things are starting to make a little bit of sense now in the next video, we'll be moving on to um, actually getting around to killing these and detecting the collisions with the lasers.